Do I choose a stable career, or do I choose something artsy that I think I would really enjoy doing? This is the question that has haunted me since I had to choose a college major. Do I try to become some sort of animator or game developer, or do I get a more stable, higher paying engineering job? I'm hoping this video will provide some hope to those who are in a similar boat asking similar questions, or at the very least be interesting to those who aren't. It was a tough choice for me. I asked a lot of my friends, mentors, and wisest of all, internet strangers who mostly told me to get a stable job and do art on the side. If I'm good enough, it'll pay for itself if I keep hustling and putting myself out there. And so far, the plan has worked pretty well. I've been working at my current job for about two years and working diligently on Isle Goblin for just over half that time. Month by month, I've slowly made progress, logging insane amounts of hours and neglecting my social life a bit in the process. This month came though, and something finally snapped in me. I keep getting asked to do overtime at work, and many of my favorite friends and managers are leaving. I'm a bit underpaid and just not having a good time overall. This led to me not getting a ton of game work done this month, but I do want to spend some time in this video covering what I did manage to finish. Then I'll wrap up talking about my current employment and financial situation. But anyways, to start, I'll show some new mechanics in the game. We could previously mount things on walls, if the wall allowed it, and I needed the ability to mount things on tables. I recently constructed this restaurant building, and you can see that the tables are able to have little plates, drinks, whatever else on them. This should be great when we allow the player to place their own furniture and stuff. They'll be able to have more customization options and adorn their house to their heart's content. Next up, I found an issue with placing buildings. I'll draw it out so it's easier to explain. Earlier, the buildings would be centered in front of the player as you place them. That was okay, but what if the player wants to place a building here and there's a tree or something in the way of where they want to stand? It should clearly fit there, but if the player tries to stand and place it, it'll be too far off to the side and it'll be very frustrating. I ended up allowing the building to shift left and right until it finds a spot that works. If that centered spot that it initially chose works, it'll go with that. And if not, it'll find a more ideal location. After banging my head into the code for a while, I got it to work nicely. This building mandates it has a buffer around it, so it's kind of hard to see in this example. But when I walk up to the space between these two buildings, the placement shifts a bit so the player is no longer centered. Such a small little detail, but I thought it was interesting enough to talk about. I've also made a little death animation for when you kill enemies. This has been a long time coming, I decided a universal explosion thing would be nice so I don't have to make a different animation for every creature. I think it looks pretty fun, nothing super special. Another thing I did was make a system for containers. I wanted any container to be able to have matching art to fit what it would look like. This involved making it so my HUD that shows the enemies is pretty flexible. I made a scriptable object where I can drag and drop the art and specify how much room is in the container. Then when I place a container in the scene, like this barrel, I can give it that scriptable object. Now when the player walks up to it, it'll hand the container HUD, which is that scriptable object, to the HUD manager to set up the menu. It will then check the save data to see if there's supposed to be anything in that container. It sounds complicated, but with all the systems that I have going, it really wasn't a whole lot of effort. If I place something inside, close it, and open it again, it'll stay there. If I close the game and reopen, it'll remain as well. I also added one more thing. In the restaurant here, I was bumping into an issue of the player being able to jump from booth to booth. This is quite silly, so I made it so tiles have the ability to restrict which directions are allowed. Whenever the player tries to move, it'll ask all the tiles beneath it if it's allowed to. This will probably come in handy later on, maybe I can make some cool traps with this mechanic or something, we'll see. And other than that, most of my work has just been putting stuff into Unity. I made the art last month, but I still had to make all the normal maps so that dynamic shadows would work and configure all the different scripts and animators and whatever else. But that's not the main reason my progress seems small this month, and it ties into what I was talking about earlier with employment. So as I said, I haven't really been able to work on much since I've been a slave to the machine for the last few weeks, and I finally decided, you know what? I need a break. I have officially, as of today, put in my one month notice. I gave them a whole month since I wanted to make sure I didn't screw over the company too much. I've decided that I'll work on game, art, and YouTube stuff for a few months while I casually look for a new job. I've got a decent chunk of savings that'll last me maybe 9 months max, but realistically I should only use up a bit of it. But then that got me thinking, can I survive without ever crawling back to work? Game development and pixel art are my passions, and maybe there's a way I can do it full time. I mean, I used to do commissions to pay my way through college, so it might be doable. I ran a bunch of numbers in my fancy spreadsheet and decided I can make my savings stretch up to 3 whole years if I make about 130 a day. This would probably come from commissions at first, but I've also finally made the decision to set up a Patreon. Now the Patreon is something I've held off on for a long time. It always felt lame to me since I had work, I didn't really need the money. But now, well, I kinda do. 
More patrons basically means the game gets done faster and the art tutorials come out more frequently. So as much as I hate to ask, if you've got an extra 10, 16, or 33 cents to throw my way every day, it would really mean the world to me if you'd become a Patreon sub. I really tried to pack in the rewards and make each tier worth it. We've got digital art books, hand signed posters, patron only in-game content, the works. But I'd definitely love to make other exclusive content too. I think it'd be fun to do raffles for free commissions, free prints and merch, and some exclusive videos once I'm more financially stable. Who knows, if it gets high enough, we may actually be able to hire some more people to help out with the game too. We'll see how it goes. I know it's a big commitment, but feel free to cruise on over and see if anything seems interesting to you. I'll leave the link down below. So thanks for sticking around till the end of the video. I normally don't prompt for specific comments, but uh, comment below if there's anything you've considered dumping your day job for. I'm curious what sort of other stuff people are into that kind of fly under the radar since they're working full time. You can of course always leave a like and subscribe and all that junk too. That would make me very grateful. So thanks again everyone for coming and uh, I'll see you next time.